But one of the things that I was most impressive with the way uh, you've proven to survive the wall with Electron is being mm. able to survive re-entry without any propulsive uh, slowdown at all. You're you're just <laughs> gritting your coming teeth in and, hot. <laughs> and getting <laughs> just coming in hot. Yeah, is, yeah. So is that something that you're hoping to be able to do with Neutron as well? Now that you've kind of learned the tricks of the trade there, yeah, or will Neutron require? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the advantage. Yeah, the, the, the advantage with Neutron, right, is, is having all of that knowledge. And it really is uh, starting from a clean piece of paper and saying, OK, uh, let's make the most reusable first, first stage in history. And how do, we, how do we apply all the lessons we've learned? And then, you know, the second stage is quite unique because uh, the second stage needs to be a very high performance, but, but also a very low cost, you know, upper stage, which generally, you know, they're at the opposite ends of the spectrum uh, to each other. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I would say, yes, de definitely the lessons learned from Electron are being directly applied to, to Neutron from, from a re-entry standpoint. And, you know, Electron was always never intended to be a reusable launch vehicle, so we're kind of, you know, uh, kind, of, kind of turning it into one. Whereas this is an incredibly luxurious scenario to sit there with a blank piece mm -hmm. of paper and say, well, here's all the things we've learned about flying Electron. Here's all the things we've learned about reusability and, and re-entering. Uh, how, do, how do we how do we make sure that this isn't just a refurbishable vehicle, uh, but a vehicle that actually literally you just roll back out and go again?